talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use, so sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cow, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong, they'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Now, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a massive show coming to you this uh, 12th of October because we've been off for a little bit and uh, we're back on live, new studios, and it's a very big welcome. Once again, Adam Ring, welcome. Thank you, Dave. And before we get into it, just a quick shout out and great congratulations to you and the crew and everyone at Channel 31 because it has been a mission and a half mm. and it was only, what, an hour ago when we put our little Facebook thingy out that we were still putting <laughs> the set together. So, tip of the cap to everyone. It's, uh, it feels awesome. It and, feels great. And thanks to the uh, the tradie on the set as well, <laughs> Nikki Dustin. <laughs> welcome, Nikki. Oh, thanks, Dave. It's great to be back. And yeah, happily, uh, Paul Pull out, pull out the drill and give it a go. So For 12 years you've been an electrician, did I, I hear know, you say in the background? I can't believe how old I am, but yes. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good to have Sparky so. on the set, I can tell you. Um, but anyway, look, let's talk fishing. Yes. Lots to talk Fine, about. We can. Um, some massive things, right? And, and not in any order, but closed season for squid. How would you, how would you cope with that? I wouldn't cope. All right, we're going to talk about <laughs> that later on. Well, it's it's happening. Anyway, uh, okay, no, I'll right, give you the right, details we'll later. <laughs> the Patterson Lakes boat ramp gate. Can't believe someone hasn't the taken the overflow to car park gate. We're going to talk about that later on. Um, and the Commonwealth trawlers targeting big King George whiting. That's In fact, the breeders yeah. off Corner Inlet. It's no good. Um, and and I'm going to give you some really good examples of how, if you let it go ahead, what will turn into. Yep. It's not good. But isn't it good to see now? 15 kilometres, four hours. Yep. People are getting out fishing, aren't they? Lots of people are getting out fishing, and it's good to see them making the most of it. We've had typical Melbourne early spring. We've had every season yeah. just but about one week. But a few nice days. Yeah, we've had some I've gotten the forecast wrong a couple of times, so it's been nice. Yeah, yeah. Like 21 degrees today, but then I yeah. think it's going to rain for the next week and tops yeah. the 13 and 14. But that's spring, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's just what it is. Top end of the bay, Nikki, people getting out? They are. Apparently yeah. Black Rock's doing okay. So I yeah. don't know if it's in your hot spots, but um, that's what nah. I'm hearing. Yeah, okay. So. And club members, are they There's not still many too that far make away? It. Oh, look, <laughs> I can make it to the Maribyrnong River, so I'm pretty happy now. But yeah. um, no, nah, look, a lot of them are still still locked down, It'd so brim to time in the Maribyrnong, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 So. Um, stonkers everywhere. How mm. good is it to see the stonkers that, too? That's that changed. That whole program of stonkers in the Metropolitan Lakes is has been a game changer. Yes. Yeah. Like you said, if you 15k still isn't enough for some people, but yeah. when you can go five minutes from home and catch 15 pound trout, best thing ever. What, do you think it's the biggest single boost to fishing during lockdowns? Because this is the oh, second year now. For sure, for sure. Yeah. It's been a fantastic thing to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And even previous to the lockdowns, it was a massive boost for trout fishing because it put trout opening back on the map. Yeah. It really did. Yeah, but it's brought it to the suburbs now. Exactly. And, and, yeah, and, you're back door. Well, I to touch wood, we're not in the same position next year. No. You couldn't imagine it with the pain that we've gone through, but you just hope that uh, that never, ever occurs. Folks, let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Now, we shouldn't forget about this uh, species because it is about to turn on. Yeah. The big snapper is starting to arrive into Port Phillip and Western Port. Let's kick it off in Western Port. Lindsay Fraser with a fantastic 70 centimetre snapper off Silver Leaves. Nice, and I suspect Silver Leaves is probably going to feature pretty heavily over the next month of talking fishing because it is a snapper mecca. And it's an early season bite there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So yeah. is that, it normally goes there first, then you'll yeah. see it come yep. across. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I reckon this guy sends. A, he might send the same photo in every year. I'm not sure, <laughs> right? But I reckon at least that. about four years running, he wears the same shirt in every pick as well. But have a look at <laughs> oh. this, Noel Stewart, big calamari, Cleveland oh, bite. Oh, good on him. Land based. How Land good is that? Based. Yep. Wow, that's awesome. And and he just wanders back to. He's got his own fish cleaning table in the shed near the bar fridge. He says, and uh, nice. Anyway, well done, Noel. It's pretty good. Another land-based location for calamari. Have a look at this. Tegan Lawrence, Ventnor Beach. 
I just don't want to hear of every day. Land-based calamari. And that's, that's a ripper calamari. Do you look how small. big that is? That's almost as big well, as a dog. I'm taking. Wow. Yeah, yeah the, it's almost bigger than the Jack Russell. <laughs> The other species which has featured really, really good in the last month or so in Western Port yep. is gummy sharks. And I'd call this for a stonker. Have a look at the size of this. Oh, wow. Whoa, yeah. That is a big girl. When you have to cuddle them, they're big. Yep. That's up there with some of the best, isn't it? I hope look we at see, the girth yeah. on it. I hope we see the return of the gummy shark boom. I remember quite a few years ago, it was a season in itself and it's kind of yeah. forgotten the last you know, four or five yeah. years, I reckon. It'd be good to see that come back. They're a beautiful fish. So many more people um, are, are, are getting them in Western Port compared to Port Phillip. Like, I, yeah. I don't, I, is it, is it because... You don't hear many in Port Phillip, really. No, no. And, is, no. and, and that, that southern end, you know, Rye Channel used to yep. be a big gummy thing, but are the whiting just that good? Are the big calamari just that good that people yeah, aren't... Yeah, people don't target them as much. They're not going on the gummies or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at the next one. No? Yes. Yeah. Travis Allen, Snapper. I just couldn't see the name on the screen. Yeah. So, um, that's Travis, a good fish. That's a nice Snapper off Mornington. We're in Port Phillip Bay now. And good to see. Uh, not only boats are catching the Snapper This ads. has been the biggest success. This has been. This is unbelievable. Have a look at this one. Land Bay Snapper Mornington Pier. Darren Matthews, well done. But he is one of many, many anglers. Yeah, this well, did well there. And shout yeah. out to Darren. I got to meet Darren in the years I worked at Tackle World Mornington, Dave, yeah. and he puts in hours in the worst possible conditions. <laughs> and that won't be the first snapper he gets of that size this season. He's a jet and he just gets it done yeah. because he will sit through the worst yep. of the worst to get the best fish. Well, yeah. he deserves it, I guess, then. Yeah, so yeah, well done. He's Almost down the, and I know I haven't got their photo, but Amy Day and Jerry Mawson yeah. are getting down. You've seen the photos off the rocks I, I have at seen it. They've done quite well. Some so. really good. Quite a few fish early season. Really good, yeah. I reckon Amy's probably caught most of them and Jerry just holds them up. Oh, he's, he's, he's just <laughs> met them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I, I, mean, I mean, if you say what's your favourite, this is, this is becoming my favourite. And this bloke here, have a look at this, Gary Norton, a rock flathead off St Kilda Beach. Oh, out in the Oof. kayak, by the way. I mean, is that a beautiful fish? If, if yeah. Gaz could work out, or if anyone can work out how to catch those Rockies consistently. What's that lure? Yeah, what is it? Is it a bibbed? It's a that strata blackheart. Wow. A strata blackheart. So he's towing, I think he's paddling and towing that behind the kayak and getting rock flatted. Aren't they a good looking, oh, a good looking fish? There's the something about them. Right. Yeah. All right, we mentioned stonkers earlier on. <laughs> I, I could look at that all night. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, not Gaz. What, not, just, just picture the fish. No, I wouldn't, look, I wouldn't look at Gaz all night, but look at the rock flathead. They, rock flathead rock, but these rock as well. Have a look at this. Thank you, Travis Dowling and the Victorian Fisheries Authority for stonkers. Dave Cusson. 15 oh, pound wow. rainbow out of Roville Lakes. <laughs> that's a big trout. That's, that's incredible. You can tell it's big when the kind of body just right at the very end morphs into a tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a big fish. That is a cracker. All right, another stonker, Casey Fields. Casey we might Fields. Talk, if we've got time, we might talk about that. But Home ground. Acacia Wyatt. Um, one point. Nikki, do you measure your fish when you get a fish like that in kilos or pounds? Look, I don't, but the club does, and they're religious. What, on in it. pounds? Or oh, not in pounds. Sorry, in kilos. No. Yeah, they measure it in kilos. I'm yeah. trying to move them away from that and go to measure. No, I reckon it's just like trout. Trout, trout maybe or snapper. In pounds. Uh, oh, snapper uh, can be. No, if it gets to twenty pounds, you've got to call it twenty pounds. Correct. Six point two five kilos. Twenty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nine no, point no. whatever kilos. But anyway. Uh, if you'd like to send in a pic of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pic to info at iFish.com.au. Go, go boys! Yeah, I want to go fishing. And coming up next, fisheries news, including a plan to boost Macquarie perch breeding. Next on Talking Fishing. <laughs> Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Talk 
talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Now, forgot to mention these two little babies we've got here on the on the bar. Just a bit of bling for the new set, Dave. Well, we have something that adds to our 2019 Antenna Award. It's the 2021 Antenna Award for the best live TV show. So, uh, well done, crew. Congratulations, There's a whole everybody. crew uh, inside this building that we can yep. see just there. But um, well done. Great team effort by everybody. So that was good. All right, fisheries news. Um, first one, have a listen. To, this is good. This is going to bring, this is going to really help bring a species back. Uh, the headline is Landcare Grant to help bring back Macquarie Perch. Macquarie Perch populations across Victoria's northeast will benefit from a Commonwealth Government grant from Landcare to help recover the iconic species through breeding and habitat improvements. Victorian Fisheries Authority CEO Travis Dowling said the $181,500 grant would be used for a range of recovery measures, measures across the Buffalo and King Rivers and Kudjua Creek. Have you ever been to Kudjua Creek? Never heard I of it. Haven't, what a but beautiful I have heard part of the world. <laughs> um, sh- now, this is some of the things that are going to benefit. A shorter helicopter trip rather than a five hour truck journey will now be used for transport of the brood fish from where they're, lo- uh, where they're collected direct to the hatchery, significantly reducing transport time and stress and hopefully improve the spawning success. And a focus on feeding them live food will further assist broodfish health, making for better quality eggs and more of them. In-stream fish habitat will be installed at two sites, including boulder seeding and hardwood timber structures, while fencing and revegetation work will improve streamside health. Wouldn't it be good if these come back? Have a look. I think we've got a photo of a beautiful Macquarie perch up there. The Landcare-led Bushfire Recovery Grants Program has been supported by the Australian Government's Bushfire Recovery Program for Wildlife and the Habitat. For more information about Victoria's collective effort to bring back the Maccas, visit vfa.vic.gov.au forward slash recovering Maccas. Um, it's got nothing to do with McDonald's. <laughs> anyway, isn't that good? <laughs> that is, yeah, that is good, good for a species people, that not too many people I mean, know about. The guys and girls at Snobs Creek are just legends, but this just helps them do a lot of hard work, right. so yep. it's all good. Um, all right, I oh, love, love a good f- fish cleaning table. <laughs> have, a, have, have a look at the photo of this one. If you love bringing home a feed of, f- of fresh fish from Cryo Bay, then we've got good news for you. There's now a fresh, uh, sorry, a new fish cleaning table at the Avalon boat ramp, which means less mess in the kitchen sink. The table features a manual pump. You can see that handle down the far end. Manual pump that draws salt water up from below. So whether it's fresh King George Whiting, flathead, snapper or squid, they'll arrive home in tip top shape for the, the dinner table. Well done, VFA, on that one. Um, bit of sad news, guys. Yeah, what's happened? Sad news. After 32 years, the Western Port Angling Club's Whiting Challenge will not be on next year. Tough. What's happened? Too hard. Oh. Too hard. Um, it was planned for um, early March, which was going to be the 33rd event, but due to COVID and, and primarily sponsors, you know, I mean, businesses have been closed, yeah. so it's tough They're to get sponsorship. Too, yeah. And then last year they had all these things they had to meet, like have a COVID marshal and have this and have that. And they've just gone, it's it's just territory that we don't know about. What's it going to yeah. be like in a few yeah. months' time? Exactly. Are they going to have to prove that everyone's double vaccinated? Yeah. Can you only enter if you're double vaccinated? How do you check? Because they go out and, like, they've actually just put in the too hard basket don't and blame. it will return um, in uh, 2023, March 2023. So thanks thanks for that, uh, Western Port Angling Club. Bit of sad news. Can I, can I show you? I'll get excited about some stuff, eh? Can I show you this photo? Here's another rock flooded. Yeah, no, no. Have a look at this photo. Have a look at this, right? On That is going to be potentially the best waterway to catch golden perch, Murray cod, trout cod, and even maccas, right? All in, all in that one lake. Hasn't got a fish in it yet. Hasn't got any timber in it yet. That is, that is a dam. It's quite a big dam. And, and we've nicknamed it the um, the steering committee for Arcadia Fish Hatchery. Ah. They had a big dam. They've filled it with water over the last two weeks because of all the rain up 
up Shepparton Way. Yep. That's going to be called Arcadia Pondage. It's going to be similar to Eildon Pondage. Oh, that's oh, cool. And it's going to have all those fish. But it hasn't got one fish in it now, so don't go fishing there for until <laughs> till we tell you, all right? But what a beautiful okay. bit of water. Yeah, it's looking cool. good. It'll always be full because they've got really good water rights at Arcadia, so that's good. Um, Oh, this one's exciting too. Look, there's so many <laughs> this things here. Exciting. Exciting. Blue Rock Lake. This is that's, uh, that's yes. the, this is the headline. Um, we'll show a photo of the fish going in. But our biggest stocking year ever at Blue Rock Lake, says Travis Dowling. For the past 30 years, we've never stocked Blue Rock with 150,000 fish in one year until now. The previous record was in 2020 when we released 125,000 fish. However, in 2021, we're going even bigger with 50,000 browns, 50,000 rainbows, and 50,000 Aussie bass. Today, which was last Tuesday, we took a giant step towards delivering on that by stocking the last of the 100,000 trout. Um, a truckload of 13, oh yeah, okay, truckload of 13,000 rainbows from Snobs. So it's only the Aussie bass to come before Christmas. Ho, 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 it that. says. There you go. Travis must write these own yeah. media releases, I reckon, <laughs> but anyway. Um, all right. It's a bit of good fisheries news, yeah. except for the Western yeah. Port Angling Club. Poor guys there. I want to talk about something that happened two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. Big day on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. Snapper season's, yeah, you can smell it smell in it. the air. Yes. And um, Patterson Lakes. It didn't get actually full to the brim, but it was very, very close. But the gate to the overflow car park was locked. What do you reckon? It needs to be opened, I guess. We need a, we know, it needs to be removed. So yeah. why is there a gate to begin with? Well, why would there be a, a gate? Do you know, I, I mean, I, don't know I asked the question on gates, social media yeah. Yeah. on our Talking Fishing page and people said uh, Werribee was the same that weekend. So Werribee, they have, mm. and I don't know Werribee at all, yeah, but it, it had a gate across its overflow car park locked. And so people had to park on the sides of the street leading into the boat ramp. I'd love to know the reason why there is an overflow gate of any sort at all. That's, like what, yeah. What's the point? Why would you not yeah. want people in there if they just wanted to park yeah. there anyway? I don't understand the point yeah. of an overflow car park. It just are you, trying to, are you trying to create congestion? I don't understand. Yeah, it's only going to make yeah. it more you know, yeah, unsafe. Yeah. The reasons yeah. for it. I'm going to give you well. another reason why yeah. the gate needs to go, but I'll leave that to the end of the show. Um, the this is, this is a real worrying one. The Commonwealth trawlers targeting breeding King George Whiting off Corner Inlet. Mm -hmm. mm. That that is a real worry. Now, what's happened, and I haven't got the ton, tonnage in front of me, but um, it, it's it's gone from like you know under a, ton, like a couple hundred kilos. The Commonwealth trawl fishery doesn't target King George Whiting, no. right? So they're kind of a bycatch. So it's gone from mm. zero, you know, to maybe a hundred kilos to maybe a couple hundred kilos to seven ton. And those seven ton were taken in two weeks by the Commonwealth Trawl Fishery. Now, the netters down at, at Corner Inlet and the recreational fishers have come together and gone, this isn't on because you know what? If you target your breeding stock and you wipe them out in two weeks, seven ton of them, what, is that, what effect does yeah. that have later yeah. down the track when there's no new fish coming through the system? So is there, was there a breeding ground off Corner Inlet that somehow they've discovered that we didn't know was there or are they intercepting so. breeding fish making their way down to Tassie or... Well, I, I, don't think I don't think any, they know I don't think exactly they know. where they breed. It's such yeah. a mystery they where they it was, breed. It was towards South Australia, but I, don't, yeah. I think they've yeah. said it might not be. No. But you can't take seven tonne and think it's not going to make... Of a big fish, like something. it's not just yeah, seven tonnes. I mean, talking I mean small. they used to take hundreds of tonnes mm. out of Port Phillip Bay, yeah. right? But they're fish that are in the bay. They're not the breeders. Yeah. When you target the breeders, how big was that school? It might have only been seven tonne, yeah. and 100% of it might have been taken. Mm. But we really need the state government, the Victorian government, to stand up to the Commonwealth government and say it's not on. Because you know what? In Tasmania, the Commonwealth trawlers aren't allowed to take King George Whiting, not one. Mm. In South Australia, they're not allowed to take any. Yeah, so two Same known as breeding Tassie. grounds. Yeah. Two yep. known breeding grounds. But in Victoria, the Victorian government, the Victorian government needs to do something about this and stop the Commonwealth trawl fishery. Now I had a call from Rob Mitchell, who is a federal MP. Um, many years ago, he was the fisheries advisor to the Victorian fisheries minister, Joe Helper. And Rob said, what can I do? And Rob said, mm. I'll, I'll take it to parliament. We will promise 
at the next election, federal election, mm -hmm. that will stop the Commonwealth trawlers. I, I haven't seen that, Rob. I haven't seen that statement come out yet, but you need the Victorian government behind you. And jointly, as the Victorian government did with tuna, they yep. said we will not touch the bag limit, we'll protect recreational fishing for tuna in Victoria. They need to do the same for these big breeding King George whiting. So uh, be warned people, this is a real hot topic and um, while they're gone now because they congregate in, I think it was back in July, it's a, it's a winter thing. Um, if this happens again next year... Well, uh, who knows what the... The well, we could be seeing closed seasons for King say, George Whiting. The effects yeah, that it has it, down the track, if yeah. they yeah. repeatedly do this We might have bag limits years, of two. We might not have a bag limit. We might just have a closed season. Might just have there a might not season. be any more Whiting challenges. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. It's not good. No, you know, it's not good at all. Um, so that's that's got to be on our radar. And, and look, when we get... Hopefully we'll get Travis and, so and that on the show pretty shortly. We might question. That's number one topic. So, so, yeah, so a question without notice. Is there an early way at which the punters watching can get involved? Is there anything to do yet as far as petitions Contact or your local MP sending or emails? Yeah. Or are we just waiting till we get a plan on how it's going to be tackled I first? Don't, I don't know. I, th I think one, right to uh, the, Victorian fish, the, the Victorian Minister for Fishing and Boating, Melissa Horn, and find out what's going on. And also right to, I, I think it's a waste of time writing to the feds, to be honest, because yeah. they've already come back to Travis and said, bad luck. Um, if, if they want to know what bad luck means, uh, uh, they're going to hear about it, I can tell you. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe rally um, the minister here in Victoria to, to do something about it. I mean, they certainly haven't... Um, you know, they, they lobbied to not change tuna, and, and we've seen that yeah. so far. So that'll be a good thing. All right, coming up next, product of the week. And Cara heads into the kitchen to cook up a treat. And I've seen it next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Fishing. Now, launching straight into product of the week, I'm going to talk to you about a range of rods that has been around for as long as I have. It seems to be that this range of rods has been a staple of fishing all over Australia for a very long time, and it continues to get better. But there's two specific rods that I want to focus on in this huge range. It's the new 2021 range of Raiders, and these two little beauties are two kids rods that have been introduced into one of the most popular rod ranges I've ever seen. Now what makes them different to I guess the rest in the range? Raiders are graphite, they're generally aimed at that lure market but now your son or daughter can have a rod just like you. And the, ra the main Raider range has cork Cork, grips. yes. So, so it's, a, it's a defining thing. That's too, right. So, so what they've done, they've still maintained <laughs> cork. They've actually got this tanned coloured EVA so that it looks, looks like, like cork. cork. Looks so, like ah. dad's rod. So just like mum or dad's rod, it, it looks just like cork. The cosmetic is, is exactly the same. Now, rather than sticking with graphite, which can be quite temperamental to being knocked around, hmm. it is an integrated solid glass tip and a glass rod, you so it is in, in, it's indestructible. You can catch a stonker on that. I was going to say, will it take the big stonkers? Do whatever yeah. you want with it. There's two sizes. So yeah. this is a little four footer, and this one is uh, four foot two. I think this is one of the coolest little programs going around because, Dave, when we first saw these quite some time ago now, mm. the first thing you said was, how many kids out there would be thinking, I want a rod just like that yep. or yeah. just like mum? Yeah. Yeah. Now that can happen with one of the most popular and versatile mm. ranges on the market because the actual Raider range itself has some crazy amount of models yeah. from mm. ultra It'd be the biggest in Shimano's range, I reckon, Easily. Yeah. for the amount of models. Easily. Yeah. From stream trout to heavy snapper to surf casting, it has everything. 
and now what's the difference between the two models so uh, length and weight rating so two okay. to four kilo on the little four footer three to six kilo on that's right <laughs> catch a snapper that, on is that. A, that is a six kilo rod wow now, yeah um i bumped into paul worsing during the week yeah. and he said he can't wait to take that hand into port phillip bay as his <laughs> rack of snapper rods this season <laughs> <laughs> Give him the so how good would that look so it's um I think it's just a great program because you're yeah. right, Dave. Every little, you know, boy mm. and girl out there wants yeah. to be just like mum and dad. Yeah. Now they can have exactly you the same You match that with, did. say, a Sedona reel or something like that, and you have got a good quality yeah. reel. I mean, real, probably the best quality There's kids' outfit on the market. There's going to be some kids fishing with some sweet gear this Christmas. <laughs> I tell you that right yeah. now. Yeah. So wow. I, I think, yeah, it's a great concept. The rods... There's nothing more to say about the rods. They said they've been around for so long. There's such a comprehensive range. They're affordable. I think RRP mm. on the kids' rods is about forty bucks. Yes. So wow. they're Great not, not breaking yeah. the bank, but they look stunning. Like they really do look quality. And I said, they're, I think they're you're every bit. See, Dad's rod, yep. Mum's rod. You are going to see Raider That's Kids fantastic. combos all over Christmas catalogues everywhere. I think, and yeah. so you should. Yeah. Are they in shops yet? They are in shops, uh, along with the rest of the graphite range too. So the the main range comes with cork. Mm. We may even so when the shops are allowed to be open, then when, yeah, that's, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. That's um, right. They're so inside yeah, the like shops. Check, check them out you on can, websites around the country. You can <laughs> click and collect, of <laughs> you, course you, you can. can. Yeah. And, and we, depending on how we go during the season, we of talking fishing, uh, we might bring in the actual main range of raiders too because they are pretty special and they have yeah. been stood the test of time. Yeah. There you go. What a great range of rods. All right. Um, what do you reckon? Let's head into the kit. I've already watched this video, this and I tell I you what, seen it, but you, I will be, see it. you will be <laughs> drooling and going, how easy is this? Let's have a look in Kara's kitchen. This week, using only six simple ingredients, we're going to turn this freshly caught rainbow trout into some really yummy fritters. To get started, we're going to par cook our trout, a little seasoning of salt, drizzle of olive oil, and then onto a very hot pan. One minute each side is all we need for our trout, as it will continue to cook once we've turned them into the fritters. So we'll take this off. Okay, if it's still got that beautiful pink in the center, and we'll let it sit. What I love about this dish is how rustic it is. I'm just roughly chopping our fillet here and we'll dice this and then into a bowl and we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. To combine the fritters in with some Parmesan cheese, some chopped chives, a little salt and pepper, an egg and the juice of half a lemon. We're going to mix this through with our hands until we've got a really lovely consistency. So the consistency we're after is a wet mix. Don't be alarmed that there's no flour or breadcrumbs in here. It's also a bonus gluten-free recipe. So the egg that we have in here is what's going to hold it together when it's cooking. Cook our little fritters, take a small handful of our mix and mold it into a disc and then onto a hot pan. We don't need to add any extra oil because we initially cooked our trout fillet in the olive oil and the natural oils in the fish will also be enough. We'll probably give these little guys about two minutes on each side until they're golden brown. And that is how easy it is to put together these quick, simple and tasty delicious fritters. I love to personally plate these up with some gorgeous sourdough bread baby spinach and top it off with a poached egg. It is a true favourite in our household. Enjoy. Told you that'd be good. <laughs> You, you were now we couldn't hear the sound then, no. but you just said, "Is that an egg yeah. going on that?" It, would that just be the best? Oh. Do Very you eat, gourmet. Do you guys eat fish for breakfast? I don't, but I'd happily eat that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, I, maybe only if we're like at a trade show or something, and we get the old salmon on I, there. I reckon one of my favourite breakfasts is like if you cook a meal the night before and you have a bit of flathead left over. Flathead. Oh, flathead. Rock flathead or are we yeah, talking well, here? Always a rocky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Up until about a year ago, well, it didn't matter. But For now, um, 
flathead and eggs for breakfast. And you just dip your flathead in the, you know, I love a runny yolk. You've got to have yeah. your runny yolk. You might have yolk. to get Cara to cook that up and see what it's like. I know. But how good is that with Flathead's the egg? Yeah, like a bit of sourdough and um, Cara's, yeah, Cara Cara's got to open up a restaurant, I reckon. Oh, for sure. Oh, I think she already did that and gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better off just doing TV stints. But anyway, um, that's all good. Um, we are going to talk about, um, I'm not sure how long we've got now, whether we can, we can actually talk about it now, but... Uh, okay, let's let's talk about it now. Um, closed season for squid. If if I told you that in two days' time it's closed season for squid, what would you say? I'd, no, I can't. We're alive to Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair here to do it. Well, I'm just telling you. Oh, I'm just no. Actually, I got it wrong. It's in three days' time in Tasmania. They have had to close squid fishing. Let me read you some of this. I mean. That's can I just say, Victoria, I mean, I mean, and I know, I know everyone's doing it tough and everyone's, you know, quite emotional right now because of COVID yeah. and lockdowns and all that. If you were to forget about all that, we have got the best managed fisheries in Australia, if not the world. Yeah. In, and I'm lucky. saying in Victoria, right? So over the border, right now, you can't go snapper fishing in South Australia. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed. It's illegal yeah. to catch a snapper, right? In three days' time... For most of Tasmania, it's illegal to catch a calamari. Didn't, didn't you say it was with the jig as well, even have oh, a jig yeah, on? Uh, let's, let's have a listen to this. So a significant <laughs> increase in calamari catch levels by both sectors, it says, um, combined with a depleting stock status, has seen spawning closures put in place on the north and south east coasts. To help maintain stocks into the future, the closures will restrain catch and ensure that calamari won't be targeted when they are at their most vulnerable. To assist with the compliance, the closure applies to all species of squid, so not just southern calamari, cuttlefish, arrowhead, the lot. Um, The east coast, and I'm talking about the east coast, right, the whole of the east coast, it's closed from the 15th of October to the 14th of November. The north coast, and when I say the north coast, from the left tip to the right tip, the entire north coast, 1st of October to the 31st of October, it's closed. Right, have a listen to this. Taking or possessing calamari and other squid species is prohibited in the closed areas. Commercially purchased bait can be used, but squid or squid parts taken prior to the closure or outside the closed area may not be possessed in the clo- in the closed area. And you cannot possess a squid jig attached to a fishing line in the closed area. I know That's... we're running out of time, Dave, but <laughs> when we... This is ridiculous. Just before yeah. we close, ask me about squid fishing in Tasmania, because I've seen it and I've been a part of it, yeah. and so much of how can they? How have they destroyed? Because they've overfished it, I would say commercially, it, every, and it's, it's poor not, fisheries management. It's and, not possible for the wrecks to oh. outfish them. I used to do trips to Flinders Island over yeah, that way yeah, 13 yeah. years ago. No one knew there was squid there. Yeah, I'll show you the map later. Um, coming up next, Kramer's Mailbag. Plenty more to come on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramerman. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance-free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my boat. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. All right, lots of mailbag, but just before then, we were madly during the break, uh, and apologies to all the people on Facebook because they can hear us during the break like they did earlier on. <laughs> Adam, Adam swore. It wasn't me. Um, <laughs> uh, 
what's the bag limit for squid in Tasmania? We couldn't find it quick enough. If someone can get on our social media, write it on our social media, on Facebook page, uh, what is the Let's bag guess. limit? What do you reckon it is? I'm pretty sure it's 10. I know I South Australia is 20. I reckon it's 15. I reckon there's no limit. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> and, and recreationals are allowed to yeah. net them. All right, bit of mailbag. Let's get into the mailbag. Um, this, oh, this is from Don. Don is 97 years old from Hastings. <laughs> and, and, and Donny writes, Hi, David. I reported to, uh, to the Mornington Peninsula Shire. Oh, I've got a photo of this. Some large potholes and broken up asphalt at the top of the ramp last week. They have closed the ramp today, which was last Tuesday. Apologies, we're a bit late. And are working on it on a windy day when nobody needs to use the ramp. Common sense has prevailed from Don. That is going to be the quickest that a council in Victoria has acted on a pothole. Yeah. I, oh, yeah that's a world that's, record. That's fair. Well done, Don. So no, so no one would have even, not, well, not too many people would have even known there was any issues because by the time they went to use the yeah. ramp... Yeah, that's right. It would have been fixed. Um, three years away from getting a letter from the Queen, Don is. <laughs> uh, all right, next one. Mark, Mark writes in here. Um, this is a bit long, so I'll try and cut a little bit. But uh, can I thank you from the bottom of my heart this is what Mark writes, for a program about commercial fishing that I certainly didn't expect, but having watched, have become a fanboy of talking fishing. Well done. I must admit, having just rowed out to my favourite whiting flathead and calamari spot around Sorrento Moorings twice in the past uh, week to return empty-handed, I was actually looking to view your weekly hotspot section when I came across last week's episode. It was fantastic. My father brought a block of land at Port Welshpool back in the 70s purely for the fishing. He later sold it for a block in Koyanga, Naruma, beautiful part of the world, where we regularly hit the mighty Montague Island. So my interest was um, picked, when, or whatever that means, when I, <coughs> when I saw Corner Inlet and you with a couple of awkward looking blokes talking about almost but not quite competing their, f oh, it's hard to read this, their something links to the corner inlet commercial fishery industry over generations their family links so anyway mark's one of many people that wrote to us about that episode with them um oh this one's brian brian no this is a question here i think like a lot brian writes uh like a lot of fishermen in lockdown, I've been fishing local lakes such as Casey Fields and Berwick Springs. When the trout are stocked, they bite very well for a few days on bait and lures, and then for some reason they go off the bite. I wonder if you or your panel could tell me why. Adam, you yeah, go down there. Yeah, I do. There's quite a few reasons why the fishing gets tough. Yeah. Um, they will get lure shy, especially when they see a lot of fish come out quickly. Cormorants are a problem. You can oh, go down and, and actively see cormorants picking yep. fish because trout are notorious for when they're released. They basically just swim around in circles till they climatise. Yep. They will still eat, they'll still do all that, but it takes them a yep. while to get their bearings and the birds pick them off pretty quick. Uh, and fluctuating temperatures can also muck around with them a bit. We've sort of had one warm day, then a, yeah. then a cold day, and they'll get a big influx of fresh water. It's a lot of a lot of factors, but it's yeah. pretty normal. Yep. And it's actually not a bad thing because as we saw, those stonkers have been in Casey Fields for quite a long time and we're still getting photos sent now for yeah. Um, yeah. catch of the week. So it's good. Keep they, existing. They do actually starve them three days before they take them Onto there as well. Them. That's what Stomps Creek was saying. So yeah. you'll probably see a hot bite those first few days. That's so given, hungry. Yeah. I didn't know that. I That's think cool. it's partly so when they transport, they don't fill up with feces in the water. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah. What a great idea. Mm, yeah, Should do that with Collingwood that. supporters. Yeah. Um, all right, this, uh, this one's from Daryl. Uh, dear Channel, he wrote to Channel 31. I had to pass it on. I'm a long-term fan uh, of, and viewer since Channel 31 started. I love community television. Just a short note to say, a great show, Talking Fishing Unhooked, with the pro fishermen. Great info out of the amateurs and public on how they love their work and have made so many excellent improvements to work practices. Great show, well done from Daryl. Um, oh, here's a ripper question. This is from Neil. Just wanting to know what happened to the barramundi that went into Hazelwood. Did they all die off? Were they all caught? Or have any survived? Love the show and watch every week. Keep up the great work, Neil. What do you reckon? Well, they say there's still a little bit of hot water coming out, but there is. the plant's closed, so yeah. they lost their heat source, essentially. Yeah. So there's a little bit know. of um, right in and tell the, us. the yeah. water from yep. underneath the mine That's is right. hot, and that's still pumped up. Into to keep the mind dry. Mm. So, um, imagine how big that'd be if there were still a couple. Of if there were still a few there, I, does, 
I'd love someone mate, to tell us mate, what's you going know what I'm talking he about. Hasn't, no, he, has, he hasn't, hasn't been, been back for a long time. They were congregating, but yeah. the one thing that never showed up was dead barramundi everywhere. So yeah, that's, that's right. a good point. They didn't. Yeah. Who, who knows? Can't can't answer that. I think it was Neil. Bit of Loch Ness Neil. monster next year. Um, yeah, it'd be made of twenty. Years. All right, this is from Roy. Uh, question: Please ask the guys whom I believe is fishing well and properly. Do they get checked regularly by fisheries officers? Not to them, but why do they see undersized fish for sale in the fish shop? Oh, this is for the commercial fishers. Oh, we're going to get them back on. I'll ask, oh, we're going to put that one aside because we'll ask them that. Um, dear Kramer and the team, love talking fishing. Watch every episode. This is from Phil. Can you please tell me why more info? Tell, can you please tell me more info? Launching my boat at lawn from the sand. What's the deal with the tractor? Do you have to pay for it or is it a free service? Two boat ramps should be built at lawn as there is nowhere else to launch a boat between Ocean Grove mm. to Apollo Bay. I can keep dreaming and uh, this might happen one day. So... Must be a tractor down there that launched you, you. I actually didn't know that, but I'd love no. to find out. There is a ramp next to the. Uh, is it the co-op next to the lawn pit? I reckon there's a I'm ramp not there, and you have lawn, to somehow launch by tractor. I've got no idea. If anyone wants to write into us, um, into Kramer's mailbag, give us an answer to that one. Anyone knows the deal down at lawn? Uh, if you'd like to write in to Kramer's mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au And coming up, the all-important hotspots, and we're going to talk about the gate at Paddo and the squid in Tasmania next <laughs> on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. All right, now apologies to people that can't get fishing within their 15 kilometres. It is tough, we are nearly at the end, so uh, just bear with the world and very shortly. What, about three weeks time, yeah, I reckon? Yeah, yeah. Not long. You can actually um, go and have a fish, but 15 kilometres. Oh, no, in fact, I think, what's the date? 12th. I think in two weeks' time you can go 25 kilometres. Oh, I've lost track of more than And then another two yeah, weeks after to that you can. <laughs> and I yeah. think we're ahead, so anyway. I'm not saying I agree with any of it. It's hard for, <laughs> hard for everybody, but we've got to put hot spots on. Um, I tell you what, there's some big calamari around this place. Tut Guruk. Uh, How's a ramp looking at Tut Guruk? Dave? <laughs> Sandy? Yeah, they haven't even dredged this year. Yeah. Like it's, you know, why they don't dredge during winter is beyond me. And we gave them a few extra months with lockdown as well. I know. Yeah, things have got to change. Point. But anyway, Tutkaruk, lots, and you only got to go 150 metres offshore. The weed beds are just out past those yellow poles and lots of big calamari nice. settling on those weed beds right now. Uh, if you want a snapper this weekend and you can get out, Morty Alec uh, is the place to be. 17 metres, you can get out quite deep, quite quick. And if it's um, blowing too hard, just fish off the pier. Fish off the pier, yeah. yeah. Piers All the other piers are going yep. really well, aren't they? Yeah. Over in Western Port, a place that's absolutely on fire, always is this time of year, Lysarts. Uh, snapper and gummies are on the chew. Lots of good gummies around there. Yeah, the gummies, too. yeah, and the snapper are going to start schooling up there yep. as we get the warmer water. And as we saw in Catch of the Week, silver leaves, the snapper are on there as well. Great. And, and of course, anyone over that side of Western Port, past Turretin, is yes, regional they Victoria, and they can go dreams. and do what they want. <laughs> yeah. Go to Bunnings. <laughs> yeah. to Bunnings. I wonder, would they be having sausage sizzles at because that's yeah. what I miss the most about oh, Bunnings, Oh, at the country right? ones. At the country ones. Were they having, having sausage scissors? That's a good scissors? question. They, I'd nothing be jealous better. if they were. Yeah. Yeah. I know. There's Can nothing they, better than a sausage. There's something it. about it, isn't it? <laughs> Can they go and have a beer at the pub? Uh, I think so. They can get a haircut. Oh, I don't know. I'm jealous. Oh, of we were jealous of you all. I'm going to get a haircut. <laughs> I'm going to... I know. I'm, I'm about, because I've had to work out how to cut my own hair, I'm going to dump 
Well, I didn't really. <laughs> but I got, you know, like a um, fam- family member to cut my hair. But I'm going to dump. I'm contemplating Ro- a buzz cut. I'm dumping Rocco from Lilydale. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to dump him. Poor little Rocco. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, it's all found someone better. So anyway, poor old Rocco from Lilydale. If anyone wants to make up and go and see him for a haircut, you can when he's allowed to open eventually. But um, I mightn't go back because I'm enjoying my new new barber. So anyway, uh, it's all good. Uh, where were we at? <laughs> how, did we get, how did we get under haircuts? I don't know. Have a look Funny. at this. Yeah. Parham Beat. Parham Beat is on fire. If you can get there, if you live in regional Victoria, get there. And, and, I've, and I've just said trout because there's browns, rainbows, there's a tigers. There's tiger trout. I saw big yeah. tiger trout Cheetah today. trout. Yep. Yeah. Um, Catch chinook, it all. Salmon. Like, you can get the lot down there. It's Bed like a small over the weed beds. Really? Yep. There you mm. go. And how is this to actually be able to name the river? And I reckon this hasn't been yeah. a hot spot for seven years yeah, so since we started. Yep. Birthday next week, by the way. Seventh birthday Ooh. next week for Talking Fishing. Okay. Um, the Tambo River Brim. Oh. How good is that? Brett Geddes, we have him every week on yes. 3MP talking fishing yep. on a Saturday morning, and he tells that Tambo is just on fire, isn't it? Oh, I can't wait to go there, Dave. I know. Keep your likes. They're just, I mean, remarkable Beautiful. recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Do your, does your club do... To, yeah, like, yeah we go down there. Yeah, like, Gibson yeah. Lakes will do, and yeah, yeah, we love it down there. They've got to be hang- the club members have got to be hanging for that. Oh, we can- we've got a few country members down there that are doing well really? on the brim. Yeah, so lucky wow. them. There you go. All right, back onto a couple of these topics we're going to talk about. Patterson Lakes Gate. Um, we talked about why the gate to the overflow car park should be taken off. Well, I've got another reason, and I think we've got a map that we can show everybody at home. But uh, if you can see that red X mm-hmm. right now, that just to the left of the red X on your screens for the people at home is the toilet block, right, which has water and sewerage. Mm-hmm. And the gate is right there, okay, right at the toilet block. Where that red X is will be the new fish cleaning tables for Patterson River Boat Ramp. So I tell you, Delp, if there's anyone from Delp listening, because they manage this facility now, if the VFA build a brand new state-of-the-art set of fish cleaning tables and Delp lock a gate and have those tables, there is going to be World War Three, and Delp's not going to survive. It's serious. I mean, you've got one arm of government going, we, we want to promote yeah. facilities, we want to do, do good things. And there's been a lot of consultation because, the, and there'll be some people at home going, we don't want a fish cleaning table at Paddo Lakes because it's too busy. Well, correct. It, it, it's a busy place, but for say 300 days of the year, people will be able to catch their fish, yeah. drive up to the overflow car park, park next to the table because you want to be able to see your boat so mm-hmm. someone doesn't knock off your rods and all that, and you're going to be able to clean your fish before you go home. And from what I understand, Dave, it's going to be a pretty special, it's not just a bit of Teflon on a wooden no. bench, they're it's going to be pretty all good. the stops. Yep. It's going to be good. Yep. But, so why lock it up? But if Delp have their way, they'll probably put a put a bloody gate across it. And, oh, no, the gate's already there. They'll probably keep Locked the padlock the on. I don't even know. I mean, I, I don't know. Last What was last weekend? I think it was all right weather. It was. Um, yeah, it was. It was good I weather. don't know. We, we try, we've we tried to get that gate permanently open. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know the status. There's been, there needs to be an announcement on social There's media or something. There's only one way to permanently open it. Angle grinder. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tassie's squid. Now, look, it, maybe on my camera you might better pick it up. Um, that red air, so that red area is water and that bottom along there that's the east east tip of Tasmania west tip of Tasmania there uh, I'm going to get this wrong yeah, Flinders Island there I'm looking at it through the back yeah, King Island. Flinders Island there, King Island there no squid fishing in three days time you've been to Flinders Island oh, yeah we used to back in the early days at the table shop we used to run trips over there hmm. and at the time this would be 13 years ago 14 years ago at the time they had no idea they had a squid fishery so the calamari thing how, and how uh, long ago was this about 13 13 14 years ago so it's taken them that long to wipe it out <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good point. Squid make up the, the greatest biomass in the ocean worldwide. It shouldn't be possible to, to wipe them out. I, mm. I don't know how they've got it so wrong so quick because it was only 10 years ago. I had no idea there was squid even yeah. there. Yeah. It baffles me, Dave. I, I don't understand. Maybe well, a reduction in catch limit was what they should have done first. You'd think so. Yeah. Yeah. 
But, anyway. if, but oh. if their bag limits are 10, my tip's unlimited, I've said it already. Yeah. But if it is 10, they don't have that many people in Tasmania no. <laughs> <laughs> to wipe it out. out. I don't get it. Well, maybe it's just a couple of big nets and overfishing from the commercial I sector. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll do some research in the week, but I yep. just I came across that and there's it's a lot of unhappy mm. punters over there. And, you know, I'll, I'll name four people. Peter Appleford, Anthony Hurst, Travis Dowling, Dallas De Silva. Those four guys over the last 12 years have created the best fishery yeah. in Australia, which is in Victoria. Those guys running fisheries have absolutely done a great job. And, and that's the thing. You, you can lose it tomorrow if you don't look after it. You got yeah. but you've, you've got, got to, to have, monitor it. You've got to you've got take all, care of yeah, it. Yeah, and you've got to have all those balances right. Yeah. So with the right bag and size limits, the right amount of commercial fishing. You saw, you know, the corner yeah. in there, guys. Based on science, not yeah, a guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why yeah. our fishery is good. Yeah. Hey, just a reminder to everybody at home, we do have a new show on radio, Talking Fishing on 3MP, Saturday mornings, uh, 6 o'clock till 7 o'clock in the morning. If you don't want to get up and listen to it, because I don't. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's, no, no, don't mean that nasty. <laughs> it's, it's way too early in the morning. Um, get the new 3MP app, because we're on the front page there. You click it. And as long as it's are. after seven o'clock in the morning, you can listen to the show. Listen to and, um, every week, pretty comprehensive yeah, live fishing it's reports. It's, it's comprehensive good, reports. So, yeah. so get on that. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, it's uh, we have just got to get through this little COVID period to get some guests on the show. Nearly we're there. Travis is dying to come on the show. Um, boat ramps. There's there's amazing amount of boat ramp uh, work going on. We need to get Catherine on the show and, and hear about all that. So, yeah. yep. and uh, you know we've we got native season just around the corner. So we've got yeah, um, right. yellow belly going to go mad. Then the the Murray cod are going to go mad. But anyway, we're getting told to go. That's it for talking fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show. We sincerely hope many of you can get out and have a fish. And please send us your pics. We love to see them. For those of you that can't get out, it's not long to go now. But until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.